most welcome to the third lecture of my series on introduction to linear algebra in this video i shall discuss how you can solve a system of linear equations by reducing that in echelon form using the famous gaussian elimination method i have discussed about echelon form and row canonical form in detail in my previous lecture i suggest you to watch that one before you watch this one the link is in the description below and you can see above as well i will solve three different types of problems in this video and explain the steps of gaussian elimination algorithm so watch carefully till the end the first problem is investigate the nature of solution and find that if exists for the following system of linear equations 2x minus y plus 3z is equal to 8 minus x plus 2y plus z is equal to 4 and 3x plus y minus 4z is equal to 0 now the nature of solution means you know that for a system of linear simultaneous equations in regard to its solution three possibilities can occur number 1 there can be a unique solution number 2 there can be infinite number of solutions number 3 there can be no solution at all so we need to investigate for this particular system what is happening and if the solution exists means if uh, we find that there will be unique solution or there will be infinite number of solutions whatever it is we need to find out that solution also so that is the problem now for this problem you can very easily understand that the augmented matrix can be written as row wise 2 minus 1 3 8 minus 1 2 1 4 3 1 4 0 1 now we have seen in our previous lecture that we can solve a system very easily if we get it in echelon form or in row canonical form so let us find out an echelon matrix equivalent to this augmented matrix using elementary row operations but we will do elementary row operations following the sequence of row operations as per gaussian elimination algorithm the first step of the algorithm is find the first column with a non zero entry let j1 denote the index of that column now that non zero entry can lie at any position that means at any row in that column if that is not in the first position that is first row of that column we need to bring that in the first row or position of that column that is if we denote the augmented matrix as a i j then we need to arrange so that a1 j1 is not equal to 0 that means if necessary we can interchange rows so that a non zero entry appears in the first row of the column j1 because we you know that row interchange is an elementary row operation so the matrix that we will be getting after interchanging rows will be equivalent to this one so we can do that now you can understand that here the first column containing a non zero entry is column 1 so we can understand here that our j1 is equal to 1 for this particular example in fact you can see all the entries in this column are non zero and eventually we have a non zero entry that is 2 in the first row of this column as well if this would have not been the case then we would have done some row operations uh, to bring the uh, 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 non zero entry in in the first position as i have told earlier now as for the requirement of echelon form all the entries below the pivot entry should be zero so what we have to do now we have to use a1 j1 as a pivot to obtain zeros below a1 j1 
In this example, J1 is 1. So actually this element is A11. That means 2 as you can understand here. So our target will be to bring zeros below 2 as per the requirement of a matrix in echelon form. Uh, now, our, what, what will be the elementary row operations for that? Simple. Our thinking procedure should be first divide the entire first row by 2. That means multiply half with the first row. So that we can imagine or we can visualize that we have got 1 in the pivot place. Then we will see what is my element that I need to make 0. For example, for the second row, I need to make that minus 1, 0. So we will multiply this entire row now with minus 1. Then what I will be doing? I can subtract that. That means I can add the negative of that to the row where I want to make the change. That means in this case R2. So I can write that my row operation will be R2 plus this thing will replace R2. Now, if we write this in a proper way, then it can look like R2 plus, look at this expression. This is very, very interesting. Minus 1 divided by 2 into R1 will replace R2. So you can understand that this is that the fraction is minus 1 divided by 2 with a negative sign. Similarly, can you tell me what will be the operation if I want to replace, uh, what will be the elementary row operation for the third row? Pretty simple. For the third row, I can write that the third row plus the negation of 3 by 2 or the negative of 3 by 2 into R1 will replace R3. And if we apply these two row operations on the augmented matrix, I will get an equivalent matrix given by 2 minus 1, 3, 8, 0, 3 by 2, 5 by 2, 8, 0, 5 by 2, minus 17 by 2, minus 12. I have read row wise. Now, if you look at this fractions carefully in uh, the row operations that I have implemented, so you can understand that here, this element is actually your A21. This element is actually your A31. And remember that this the value of J1 here is actually equal to 1. So keeping this in mind, I can write or we can see here a generic pattern of this row operations. Actually, I have done this row operation so that we get a generic pattern of this row operations so that we can get an algorithm form of thing. And you know, to have an algorithm, we need to find a generic pattern. You can do this uh, thing by so many ways, but in Gauss elimination method, this particular um, pattern is suggested because it makes things convenient. You don't have to think anything else if you have a pattern. You will fit things in that pattern and you will get the answer. So the pattern that we can find here can be written as set m is equal to minus of a i j1 divided by a1 j1 and then replace the ith row r i by r i plus m into r1. That means you replace the ith row by this linear combination of the ith row and the first row when first row is multiplied by this multiplier m which you have determined earlier. Now you can understand that for this particular example the value of i here is equal to 2 and in this case the value of i is equal to 3 for the third case. So you if you simply plug in the value of i uh, uh, in these two operations as per their row indexes and remember that j1 is equal to 1 here. The column uh, uh, index j1 is equal to 1. So if you plug in all these things in this uh, 
uh, a generic formula actually you will get these two row operations for the two rows where i is equal to 2 and i is equal to 3 so that is uh, how we can we can in a generic way define row operations in this case now uh, the next step will be repeat step 1 with the sub matrix formed by all the rows excluding the first row that means i will simply exclude this first row from consideration and i will consider now the remaining matrix as my matrix of the context so now here uh, we will repeat the same operation in a same a uh, same way so i will first find out uh, the first column having a non zero entry now in this remaining sub matrix you can understand that column is column number 2 in column number 2 we can see that not only the uh, not only one element but all the elements are actually non zero both the elements are non zero and i already have a non zero entry in the first position so i need not have to do any row interchange as well and accordingly the corresponding column index for this particular sub matrix uh, 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 that particular column with that particular first column with a non zero entry is the second column that is j1 as we were referring earlier for this matrix this sub matrix j1 will be 2 not 1 because in the first column you can see of the sub matrix in the first column both the elements are zero so here uh, the first column with a non zero entry at least one non zero entry will be two that means in this context j1 is equal to two that means here my j1 is equal to two and in the remaining matrix can you tell me that which element i need to make zero now i have to make zero now absolutely correct the element below that 3 by 2 which is marked with a square now in this remaining sub matrix you can understand that 5 by 2 lies in the second row that means in the remaining sub matrix my i will be equal to 2 if for the remaining sub matrix that is in the second row and the position of this column is a 2 2 sorry the position of this entry is a 2 2 that means uh, j1 is equal to 2 i equal to 2 so comfortably i can write this element as a i j1 so by the uh, uh, elementary operations whichever is defined in this generic formula what i can write what will be my corresponding row operation for this change pretty simple i will write the row operation as r2 plus minus of 5 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 into r1 will replace r2 remember i am again saying remember very carefully that all these row indexes are written in respect to the sub matrix not the original matrix now can you tell me if i write the same operation with respect to the indexes of the original matrix how i can write that particular this particular elementary row operation pretty simple it can be written as r3 plus minus 5 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 into r2 replaces r3 and after applying this elementary row operation uh, this matrix will be equivalent to row wise 2 minus 1 3 8 0 3 by 2 5 by 2 8 and 0 0 minus 76 by 6 minus 76 by 3 now you can understand that in the first step our pivot entry was this in the second step our pivot entry is this now uh, you can understand that if i again think uh, the pivot entry for the third row is actually this because now we can see our matrix we have got is in echelon form 
Now note that in the first step, we have used the first row to bring zero below this element two. In the second step, we have used the second row to bring zeros below this element three by two or below the pivot elements. In the first step, we have used the first row. In the second step, we have used the second row. Now you can think, in the second step also, we could have used the first row to bring zero below the pivot three by two, but we have not done. Can you identify or understand why we have not used the first row in the second step? Pretty simple. If you do that, then there is a possibility that you will get a non-zero entry here. That is against the requirement of your echelon form. So that's why keeping that in mind, we have not used the first row in the second step of our sequence of operations. Instead, we have used the second row in our uh, second step of the sequence of operations. In this way, if a matrix contains a more number of rows, we can similarly go on doing the calculations. So uh, one more thing I would like to tell you, uh, you can write row operations. You have to write row operations while well, you will be solving problems. But write row operations uh, uh, in, in, in whatever format you will be writing row operations means uh, your indexings are with respect to the submetrix or with respect to the original matrix. I think you should clearly write that and you should clearly understand that. So I have written two things actually. One, I have made the indexing with respect to the submetrics, and in the uh, second one, I have made the indexing with respect to the original matrix. So don't get confused. Be very clear about this point. If you have any doubt, any question at this point, you can ask me in the comment section below. So after doing all these steps, we have got our system in echelon form, and you can understand, we can very easily solve it. How we can solve it? Pretty simple. This augmented matrix actually corresponds to the system of linear equations 2x minus y plus 3z is equal to 8, 3 by 2y plus 5 by 2z is equal to 8, and minus 76 by 6z is equal to minus 76 by 3. Now we can solve it very easily. How? Pretty simple. You just apply back substitution on this linear system of linear simultaneous equations. So from the last equation, you can very easily calculate z is equal to 2. If you plug in the value of z equals to 2 in the second equation, you can very easily get y is equal to 2. And if you plug in the value of y equal to 2 and z equals to 2 in the first equation, you can very easily calculate that x is equal to 2. So the solution of the given system of linear simultaneous equations are x equal to 2, y equal to 2, z equal to 2. That means the solution set is x equal to 2, y equal to 2, z equal to 2. And since this system of linear simultaneous equations in echelon form is obtained from the original system of linear simultaneous equations by applying elementary operations, we know that the solution of the two system of linear simultaneous equations, this one and the original one, will be the same. So we can say that the solution for the original system of equations will be given by x equal to 2, y equal to 2, z equals to 2. So the problem is solved. Now uh, you, can, you can understand that the matrix that we have obtained here is a matrix in a shell on form. If we, uh, if we wish, we can further simplify this and get another convenient form known as row canonical form. Now, what is the basic difference between echelon form and row canonical form? A row canonical matrix means it is echelon matrix. Along with that, there has to be two additional uh, 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 properties. Each of the pivots should be one. And the pivot is the only non-zero element in its column. So we need to, we, we can, we can, we can uh, do a few more elementary row operations to get in, get this in uh, 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 canonical form or row canonical form also. So what will be my uh, row operations to make all the pivots one and all other elements in the column 
containing the pi vot 0, what we can do? 1 divided by minus 76 by 6 into R3 will replace R3. So if we do that, uh, my first two rows will remain intact in this matrix and the third row will change to 0, 0, 1, 2. So you can see here that my pi vot has become 1. So what will be my next operation? Using the third row, I should uh, uh, try to change uh, the second row and the first row in such a way that these two elements becomes 0. So what will be my row operations for that? Pretty simple. The row operations will be R2 plus minus 5 by 2 into R3 will replace R2 and R1 plus minus 3 into R3 will replace R1 because you can understand that the pivot element is 1. So whatever I want to uh, make a 0, I will multiply that element uh, uh, with that row, corresponding row and I will simply subtract that. Subtraction means adding the negative of that. So uh, that is the basis of uh, why I am writing it in this way. And if you apply these two row operations, your matrix will be equivalent to this matrix. Now again, if you look carefully, then you can understand that in these two operations, in this one and these two, we again have a pattern. Can you identify the pattern? So if we write the pattern in a generic way, then we can write that for a general matrix in echelon form, if the pivots are uh, denoted by the symbols A1, J1, that means the pivot of the first row I'm assuming is located at the column uh, J1. A2, J2, that means pivot for the second row is situated at the column J2. In this way, uh, suppose there are R number of non-zero rows in the Tessilon form and the pivot for the Rth row is located at the column JR. Here you can see in this example that the pivot for the first row is located at the first column. That means here J1 is 1. The pivot for the second row is located at the second column. That means here J2 is 2. And the pivot for the third row is located at the third column. So here J3 is 3. Uh, if there are more number of rows and the pivot are located at different positions, we can accordingly find out the values of J1, J2, etc. But in a generic way, I'm representing the pivots with these symbols, A1, J1, A2, J2, etc. up to AR, JR, the R pivots. If I have R number of non-zero rows in the echelon form. Then whatever I have done is the first step can be uh, 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 written as multiply the last non-zero row that is row number r that is rr by 1 by arjr what is arjr that is the pivot see you can understand here that in this matrix i have multiplied uh, this uh, uh, 70 minus 76 by 6 was was my uh, pivot entry in this echelon form in this echelon form minus 76 by 6. So what we have done, we have divided the entire third row by that element. So that is what I have written here in a generic way. So in that way, you can get one here. Now, how you can make all other entries in that column zero, that means here all other entries above this column. So pretty simple, uh, you will do this operation that Ri, for i belongs to, for i equals to r minus 1, r minus 2, etc. up to 1. That means for all other rows, for all other i's above this, uh, 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 I will apply the operation ri will change to, sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, this arrow should be in this direction. So ri, the ith row plus minus of aijr. Aijr means the element the element in the ith row in the same column which contains the pivot. Here you can understand that the column for pivot is J suffix R. So AIJR means the element in, this, in, in that particular row which I am changing but in the same column where the pivot is situated. So if you perform this operation RI plus minus AIJR into RR will replace RI. That means here you can see my operations are uh, like these two. Uh, you can understand that here the elements above the pivots are minus 5 by 2. That means when i equals to 2, 
uh, this is my uh, my element say for example if i consider the position of this element the position of this element is a in the whole matrix the position of this element is a 2 3 and you can understand here the third row means a, a, a small r is equal to 3 so for this particular operation step of operation as per my generic symbol j suffix r is equal to 3 that means this is because this is contained in the third column this is contained in the third column because for this element i is 3 j is also 3 so j r in fact is equal to 3 for this element so j r is equal to 3 so you can understand that a 2 3 is actually a i j r what i have done and i have taken a negative sign here similarly the uh, the position of this element will be a is actually a 1 3 this is lying in the first row third column so here you can understand i is equal to 1 and here you can understand this is the third column that is this is jr so aigr that means in a generic way i can write these two operations by uh, this generic pattern or this generic symbolic representation so we have done exactly this now what should be done now you can understand in the remaining matrix now i will repeat the same operation same pair of operations for this 3 by 2 first and after uh, 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 after i divide this row this second row by 3 by 2 i'll get 1 here in the pivot place and using this uh, 1 i will make uh, using this row the second row the modified second row i will change the first row in such a way that i get a zero here so in that way all elements in this column will be zero with pivot 1 so that is uh, that will be my second operation uh, so if I write that, then I will get 1 divided by 3 by 2 into R2 will replace R2. So we will get 1 there and to make 0 above that 1, we will uh, uh, do the operation that R1 plus minus of minus 1 into R2. That means this is same as writing R1 plus r2 replaces r1 that is same i have written in this way so that i can totally match with whatever the generic formula is written in the right side of your screen so r1 plus r2 will replace r1 and if we do this too we uh, get in this way that means you can understand that uh, your pivots are now one in the third row and all elements above one is uh, zero are zero and one again in the second row and all elements in the column containing this one are zero so satisfying the requirement of row canonical form i have only one difficulty that is uh, this pivot is still two so i need to make this one so it's pretty simple my operation will be one by two r1 will replace r1 and accordingly we get the uh, 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 augmented equivalent augmented matrix in this form one zero zero two zero one zero two zero zero one two that means you can understand that we actually if we write it in a generic form then we can write that repeat step four for rows r r minus one that means r minus one th row to the second row remember and for the first row only divide the row by a one j one that is the corresponding pi book so you can understand we have actually uh, uh, done that here and uh, if we write the system of equations corresponding to this then you can understand pretty simple that the system will be x plus 1 into x plus 0 into y plus 0 into z equals to 2 uh, 0 into x plus 1 into y plus 0 into z is equals to 2 and uh, 0 into x plus 0 into y plus uh, 0 into z is equals to 2 that is we are getting x equal to 2 y equals to 2 z equals to 2 as my solution of this equivalent uh, system which is in row canonical form and we obtain this from the original matrix using elementary row operations at every step that means this matrix is equivalent this augmented matrix is equivalent to the augmented matrix of the original system or in other words this system is equivalent to the original system hence the two has same solution so uh, 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 this is my uh, desired 
solution and we can understand that uh, we have unique solutions here and unique solution here and the solution set is given by this so this is how you can solve a system is of linear equations using gaussian elimination method now mm, uh, this might uh, look difficult uh, uh, to you actually it's pretty simple once you do it in your own it will look pretty simple i have written uh, the generic forms as well as i have done the calculations showing you the symmetry uh, uh, between the generic form and the calculation that we are doing with numbers it may look a bit complicated to you but believe me once you do it once you uh, start doing it yourself uh, it's it's pretty simple the algorithm is pretty simple why i have written the generic form so once you understand the generic form people who know programming can simply write a program for this in any language you wish if you understand the algorithm carefully so now uh, you probably have noticed that uh, this algorithm has two parts in the first part we got an echelon form and in the second part we got a row canonical form and essentially the echelon form and the row canonical form of course will produce the same solution because they are equivalent so this particular process of gaussian elimination can be termed as two stage algorithm two stage gaussian elimination algorithm where you have probably noticed that in the first step we have followed a top down approach means we have started from the first uh, uh, row and then uh, 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 keep on making changes in the second row third row etc so that's why this process means step uh, the first set when we got the echelon matrix as our output that is called as a forward elimination and in the second part when we shifted from uh, when we further reduce from echelon form to row canonical form you can understand that uh, we have applied a bottom up approach so this is known as the backward elimination i'm sorry i forgot to write uh, uh, the uh, the third step of the forward elimination process i i actually thought you will you will understand that uh, the third step if we write formally would be continue until there is only one row in the sub matrix so this so uh, the forward elimination contains three steps and backward elimination contains three steps and once you apply the forward elimination you can understand that your output will be an echelon matrix uh, uh, the augmented matrix in echelon form and if you apply when you apply the backward elimination that is the bottom up approach in this way your output will be a matrix in row canonical form that means your augmented matrix will be in row canonical form now a point to note here is that you may have seen that in the forward elimination process we are always dividing a particular row with the pivot element in that step for example here we have divided everything by 2 in the next step we have divided uh, the rows uh, 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 the, uh, the multiplier by 3 by 2 so uh, in the denominator we have the pivot element of that step so you can think what will happen if the pivot becomes zero at any step then you will get a zero in the denominator but let me tell you that possibility is ruled out by this first step that you are doing you are arranging the rows in such a way that your pivot becomes a non zero element so the possibility that getting a zero in the denominator will never occur and that is due to this first step so this first step is extremely important although for this example we have not realized that but for the next example which is uh, uh, as follows we will realize that find the nature of solution of the system 2y plus 4z plus 5 is equal to 0 8x minus y plus 4z equal to 12 16x minus y plus 10z is equal to 1 now note that in the first equation we don't have any 
x and the constant is also written in the left side of that equation. So, if we uh, think about the augmented matrix, the augmented matrix can be written as 0, 2, 4, minus 5, 8, minus 1, 4, 12, 16, minus 1, 10, 1. So, the first column containing non-zero element in this matrix is given by column 1. But the problem is, I am not having a non-zero element in the first position or row 1 of this column. So, as described in the first step of the algorithm or the forward elimination process as discussed above, what I need to do? I have to do row interchanges to bring a non-zero entry in the first position. So, I can write that this particular matrix is equivalent to 8 minus 1, 4, 12, 0, 2, 4, minus 5, 16, minus 1, 10, 1. Obtained by interchanging the first and the second row. Now, you can understand that this is your first non-zero element in this row. That means this is the leading entry of this particular row. So, what will be our next uh, set of operations will be aimed, the next set of operations uh, needs to be aimed in making these two elements zero. Already I have this one zero, the second one zero. So, there is no row operation required for the second row. But for the third row, I need to require a row operation. Pretty simple, I'll do that. And even if you apply the generic formula for the second row also, you can see that the second row will remain intact because your numerator, as per the generic formula, if you plug in here, uh, if you do as per the generic formula I discussed earlier, uh, the numerator will be zero. This zero will be in the numerator. So, mm, mm, as a result, nothing will be added to this second row. Uh, 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 so, your second row will remain intact. So, I can think of uh, 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 not writing any operation for the second row and uh, I'll just write I'll just write the operation for the third row and if I do that I will get that this matrix will be equivalent to 8 minus 1 4 12 0 2 4 minus 5 0 1 2 minus 23 and my row operation will be R3 plus minus 16 by 8 into R1 will replace R3. I could have simply written R3 plus, sorry, R3 uh, uh, minus uh, 2R1 replaces R3. Uh, that is same, but I have written in this way so that you can understand the generic formula, how, how I am applying the generic formula. Uh, you can you can ask me the generic generic formula can be applied for the second row also. Yeah, that can be applied and you will get the same result. As I told you, there will be no effect because if I write the generic formula for the second mm, uh, uh, row, the generic formula will be R2 plus minus of 0 divided by 8 into R1 will change R2. So, you can understand this part is actually 0. So, uh, you will get a zero row here if you multiply uh, because this 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 thing is zero. So if you multiply zero with row one and add it, you get row two. So there is no change. So mm, uh, it is as per the generic formula that I discussed above. Why I'm saying this every time? Because you can now think of writing a computer programming for this because it's a foolproof algorithm that you you are learning. So think it from that perspective. Write uh, think it in from the perspective of a generic algorithm now where which you can code so everything goes well running well so now i have got uh, 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 this as my uh, uh, leading entry for the second step so as per the operations described above as per the algorithm described above what will be my target my target should be to make the element below this zero that means i i should try to make this one zero and for that my operation will be pretty simple what will be my operation my operation will be uh, say r3 plus minus 1 by 2 into r2 will replace R3. Now see, again I am saying, I have written this operation from the perspective of the original matrix as it is given. If you write this, 
from the perspective of the reduced matrix or the sub matrix then uh, uh, you will replace this 3 by 2 then actually your thing will be sorry then you will write this as r2 because in the sub matrix the last row is the second row in the sub matrix and you will replace this by 1 and you will replace this by 2 so so the thing is same but understanding this everything from the perspective of the original matrix is better uh, if you think from the perspective of writing a program for this. So uh, this R3 plus minus half into R2 uh, will replace R3. So if I do this, my reduced matrix will be uh, 8 minus 1, 4, uh, 12. Then 0, 2, 4, uh, minus 5. Then it will be 0, 0, 0, minus 41 by 2. Now, now I will not do anything further. I shall not do any further operation. There is no need for me to think about row canonical form or, 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 or anything else because you can simply understand. Look at the matrix carefully. Look at the augmented matrix carefully. Look at the last row. You got an impossibility here. Sorry, you got an impossibility here. The last row, if you if you think about the corresponding system of linear simultaneous equations, then the last row actually corresponds to an equation like 0 into x1 plus, sorry, 0 into x, 0 into x plus 0 into y plus 0 into z is equal to minus 41 by 2, which is totally absurd, which cannot happen. No value of x, y, z on earth will satisfy this. So, this is absurd. That means what we can say? We can say the system has no solution because no value of x, y, z will satisfy this. And we know that uh, even this kind of an equation is known as a degenerate linear equation. So, degeneracy occurred with the right hand side constant non zero. So, there cannot be any solution. So, our, our answer is hence there is no solution to the system given. So, you can understand that by simply applying uh, the Gaussian elimination, we can understand uh, we, we have got to know that there is no solution, uh, 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 no solution exists for the system of equations given. Now, if we consider the next problem, the next problem will reveal another feature. Find the solution if exists of the system x1 plus x2 minus x3 plus x4 equals to 0. x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 minus x4 is equal to 0. 3x1 plus x2 plus x4 is equals to 0. Now, you can see the right hand side constants, all the right hand side constants are 0. Now, this kind of a system is known as a homogeneous system of linear equations. Now, we will solve, uh, we will try to do the same thing, means all our steps will be exactly the same as we have done in uh, earlier cases. So, if we do all the steps, now I am not writing the explanation, I will just write all the steps. Uh, if required, you can pause the video and you can, you can check the steps. I will write the final answer with all the steps. So, if I write all the steps uh, uh, without explaining, then I will get, and if I do this by applying Gaussian elimination method, I will get my augmented matrix will be equivalent to this row canonical matrix. You can understand this is a matrix in row canonical form where these are the two pivot elements. Uh, actually, you can identify or you can see a very important thing here that this row has totally become zero. That means this row is actually linearly dependent on the other two rows. Or you, you can see that I can express the third row as a linear combination of the first and second row. That's why this thing is happening. And uh, if, we, if we write this particular uh, 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 augmented matrix, uh, which the, the, the row canonical matrix, uh, which is uh, obtained by applying the two-stage Gaussian elimination algorithm. 
if we think about the system of linear simultaneous equations corresponding to this row canonical matrix then the uh, a system can be written as 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 x x1 uh, plus half x3 is equal to 0 and x2 corresponding to the second row x2 minus 3 by 2 x3 plus x4 is equals to 0. Now, if you remember as per my discussion in the previous lecture, uh, how to solve a system in row canonical form or a system in echelon form, you can understand here that in this case, my pivot variables are x1 and x2 and x3 and x4 are my free variables. So, how to solve it? The procedure of solution is as discussed in my previous lecture, we will assign arbitrary values to the free variables. So, I will assign now let x3 equals to a and x4 is equal to b. What are a and b? Arbitrary real numbers, where a and b are arbitrary real numbers. So, I will assign uh, uh, arbitrary values to the free variables. Here, my free variables are x3 and x4. Uh, you, can, you can understand from this system. So, and I'll now, uh, now I'll, I'll find out the values of the pivot variables x1 and x2. So, if we find out the pivot variables now, uh, if I plug in the value of x3 in the first equation, I get x1 is equal to minus half a. And if I plug in the value of x3 and x4 in the second equation, I get x2 as equal to 3 by 2a minus b. So, these are the values. And I am again reminding you that this x1 and x2 are my pivot variables here. If you have forgot the definition of pivot variable and free variable, I'd recommend you to revise uh, my, my previous lecture where I discussed about echelon form and row canonical form. And this x3, x4 are my free variable. These are known as my free variable. Free variable. These two are my free variable. So, the solution technique is assign arbitrary values to the free variable and calculate the pivot variable. So, these are my values for the pivot variables. Therefore, uh, if I write the solution set, the general solution is given by, therefore, the general solution is given by this x1 equal to uh, minus half a, x2 equals to 3 by 2a minus b, x3 is equal to a and x4 is equal to b. What are what are a b? Pretty simple, where a and b are any real number. So for a particular value of a and b, you get a particular solution, as you know. And uh, we can say therefore our conclusion is the system possess infinite number of solutions, and the general solution is given by this. Now you can understand if I consider this as a column matrix of the unknowns or as a column vector, then you can understand that this can be written as a into minus half uh, 3 by 2, 1, 0 plus b into 0 minus 1, 0, 1. So that means this reveals us another thing. It says that any solution of this given system of linear equations is a linear combination of these two solutions which are independent. So we can say that a set of independent solutions are given by these two. And any solution of this system can be written as a linear combination of these two independent solutions. 
So this is a far better characterization of the uh, uh, solution of the given system of equation. This concept is extremely useful uh, uh, in, in, in our future uh, course of development in the subject, where you can express a solution as a linear combination of two independent solutions, where you can represent uh, the solution set or the set of all solutions as a linear combination of some independent solutions. Gradually, I will discuss uh, these concepts also, and these are extremely useful. So now the next problem will remain your homework. Find the solution if exists of the system x plus y plus z is equal to 6, 2x minus y plus z is equal to 3, x plus z is equal to 4, and 2x plus y plus z is equal to 7. So you have four equations with three unknowns. Don't bother. I just apply the uh, Gaussian elimination algorithm step by step as discussed earlier. And let me know what you have got or what is the solution in the comment section below. I will be waiting for your answers. Now we have seen that the number of pivots and number of non-zero rows of a system in echelon form are same. Whatever be the number of pivots, that is equal to the number of non-zero rows in the echelon form. Once we reduce any, any matrix into its echelon form by Gaussian elimination algorithm. Now, this number is known as the rank of a matrix, which is another key concept of linear algebra. And rank has several interpretations. Uh, rank can be, can be discussed from several perspectives, but every thing will lead to the same number. And, and that is extremely important. Understanding the concept of rank is extremely important, which I shall discuss in the next video. See you in the next video. Take care.